So, Alex, to start out, yes. why don't you tell the viewers who you are and what you do? Cool. Hello, my name is Lucas Stark. Uh, I do YouTube videos uh, on the internet. I kind of do a lot of very different things from vlogs. I do a little bit of gaming. I do a little bit of dancey stuff. There's some stuff on my channel. I'm trying to do some more. Uh, and then I also do stuff for Zelda Universe as well. All right. And if people wanted to find your YouTube channel, how could they find you? What's your link? Uh, you can go to youtube.com forward slash Luca Starks. That's Luca Stark with an S because someone parked Luca Stark before I got it. Yeah. And, Rude. <laughs> and today you're going to be discussing uh, E3 predictions with me. Yeah, I have been following a lot of E3 stuff. I'm actually going this year with Zelda Universe. I'm really excited. Um, and I've been paying attention to a lot of what people have been announcing that, oh, this is happening and this is happening. And so I wanted to do my spin on all of that because I actually have my own predictions. You can find all of my videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash gameoverjesse. And then on Facebook and Twitter, everything is also slash or at gameoverjesse. So what are uh, some of the smaller games or less exciting games that you think are going to be shown off or that you would like to talk about? Um, I don't know if this is going to be an exciting game, but it's a game that I like, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, a while ago, um, when the creator of Splatoon and Animal Crossing was interviewed, um, he, the person interviewing him made a comment very briefly about whether or not we would get a new Animal Crossing on uh, Wii U. And he said, and I quote, well, that's difficult for me to answer at the moment. Yep, that's pretty much all we can say. And the only, the only way that, that makes sense for me as to why he said that is that he can't say anything. Because if he said nothing, or if there was no Animal Crossing planned, he would have just been outright. So I am calling Animal Crossing Wii U. I think it's going to happen. I know they announced Happy Home Designer like a month and a half ago, but I'm still calling it because I think that would be cool. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think Animal Crossing uh, is one of the much newer franchises they have. I think it came out on the Nintendo 64, but a lot of people didn't get <laughs> to play it until it was re-released well, on the GameCube. And uh, well, compared... On, uh... Well, and we only, I think U.S. only got it on GameCube, actually. I think it everywhere. I think only Japan got it on the N64. Yeah, but it was the same game that was ported over. For yeah, them. it was the same game. It was the same game. Yeah. And uh, so it's sort of, you know, it's uh, not been out as long as some of Nintendo's other franchises like uh, Metroid, for example. But it seems to yeah. be a lot more popular. Yeah. and. You know, I, I'd have to agree on that, because for me personally, you know, I think the casualness of Animal Crossing is great, especially with New Leaf. I think it works really well on a handheld because I can just uh, like just pick it up whenever I have like 15 minutes. The only issue is that it takes forever to do anything. <laughs> exactly. it's, it's That's the one frustrating part, but I don't really care because I enjoy it. Right. Yeah. And so that was the one I want to get out of the way immediately. Yeah. And that was I remember... actually called. If I remember correctly, the Animal Crossing for the Wii uh, dabbled a little bit with online function. They did. So do you think they could improve upon that with the Wii U, or do you think they'll scrap the online features entirely? Well, I don't think they'll scrap it, because there, there is online with New Leaf as well. Um, you can visit other towns, you can actually go and do multiplayer stuff on the island, so I don't think it's going to go away. And it should not go away. Um, what I would love to see is um, Nintendo's actually done very well at with gaining more online um, support for their games and making it a lot easier to do multiplayer. And so, um, especially because this is from the developers that made Splatoon, um, I mean, if the team from Splatoon basically takes everything from online there and put it into Animal Crossing, that could be awesome. Like, going to all these other towns, um, doing other minigames, because there's not a whole lot online that you can really do with Animal Crossing. I don't know if it's that type of game. Right. All right. So, and, uh, you mentioned... So I think about that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry, what was that? Your computer kind of uh, 
glitched a little uh, bit. Um, that's all I have about that one. <laughs> all right. Um, you briefly mentioned Splatoon. Nintendo announced that they would be uh, talking about upcoming DLC <coughs> and stuff like that for Splatoon on the Wii U. What kind of DLC do you see it getting, and do you see it getting something similar to how uh, you can play as other Nintendo characters that previously were unseen in past Mario Kart games? Um, honestly, I have no idea. Um, <coughs> I... <coughs> Rude. <coughs> Dog, can you not? Uh, oh, this is the problem with me being in open space. Shh, Maxi, quiet. Um, um, so here's my honest opinion. I have no idea. I have actually haven't played Splatoon yet. Um, I, I want to. I haven't had time to do it, and I've missed the, out on the demo opportunities. Um, or if I did, I've just been too lazy to check. Um, but I think it would be easy to see how the Splatoon, uh, like if Nintendo characters came into the Splatoon. I think that would be kind of cool. I don't know whether or not it'll work with their art direction. Maybe, because I, I sort of understand it in terms of Mario Sunshine, yeah. but I don't know whether or not it would fit for every other character. Because Mario Kart's one of those things where you can just kind of throw up franchises in, just put tracks in, and then you're good. <laughs> so unless right. they do like a very specific map pack that's like Nintendo-themed levels, which I'm totally fine with, um, then... Maybe that would work. I mean, I think that I f like just characters would probably not be the best option yeah. for it. I think a uh, a better solution to having your favorite character, favorite Nintendo characters in Splatoon, is if they released <laughs> uh, costumes that they could wear that resembled the characters. That way, yes, they can have the shirts or the jackets and the hats and the style of Splatoon, but it won't necessarily be the character. Yeah, skins are probably the easiest way to go with that one. Do I think it would be the best way to go? I don't ne think it's necessarily, but, I mean, you're already customizing your character a lot as is, so I don't think it would be that much of a difference. Right. Um, what are some other games coming from Nintendo that you're excited for? Um, I know they are probably going to be talking about Star Fox, which yeah. makes me really happy because I am missing Star Fox in my life. <laughs> um, I would love to be able to play a Star Fox game where he's in a plane, and I hope they bring something with that right. uh, to E3. Because, I mean, it's been... Uh, Star Fox 64 3D went in 2011, right? and we ha haven't had another game since. Yeah, and that was, and that was a remake. remake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, some of the other ones have completely deviated from, like, flying a plane for the most part, which makes me sad. So yeah. I would love to return to the roots. Uh, personally, I would like it, and I think there was already a game that sort of messed with this type of gameplay mechanic, but to where it had you on your ship flying through the air, flying through space, like a normal Star Fox game, but it also gave you a few elements from Star Fox Adventure, where you're on the ground and you're... Uh, doing a little mission or a little quest, and then after the mission's complete, you get to go back up in the air and then fly around again. That way, it'll have a little bit of, uh, like, just a little bit of gameplay for everybody. So, like, if you're oh, more oh, into the well, adventure style. Okay. So, here is my two cents about this whole thing. Number one, I feel like the flying the plane then like a one little mission on ground has been done in a Star Fox game. Two, I have I get very eh about the idea of everyone uh, getting something that they want, and I say that primarily because there are particular franchises like Zelda and Metroid that cater to a very specific genre. Like if you want to play an adventure game, you want to play Zelda. If you want to play a racing game, you play Mario Kart. Platforming, Mario, etc. Right. When you go into territory of making a game that's accessible for everyone, you most often end up disappointing everyone because, you know, you're not going to be able to get the same uh, response and the same, like, rebel or level of uh, approval from every single person. I think it would probably be just a lot better if it just went to its root because I think it works more there. Um, 
because you know whenever we had stuff where there was just that mix i never really found it interesting right and i don't know why right and do you see any kind of uh new gameplay mechanics that they can add with the wii u gamepad um i would love to see um like a like a control like panel on the wii u gamepad um like to sort of see like where your friends are in flight like health bar information for the enemies <coughs> uh maybe like a score counter or something like that yeah um i would love to see just stuff like that because i think it would just make it more immersive right and then uh there's always uh the addition that they could bring in local multiplayer and have one person play with the gamepad and the other with the regular controller. Yeah, that would be kind of fun, like a sort of a team deathmatch kind of thing. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, and uh, another game that's <coughs> similar in some ways to Star Fox, as it's another game by Nintendo where you play a space bounty hunter, do you think Metroid will be making an appearance? I don't think... I hope so. Yeah. Oh my god. If they do, I don't think they'll bring it to the Wii U because they won't want to compete with uh, Star Fox. So I think they would be better off bringing it to the 3DS. That way they could promote both of them without it competing with each other. Um, I don't think that competition is necessarily a bad thing, but I think also it would be very smart is to just have, not, have them not be released at the same exact time. Right. Um... I mean, because I would love it on a Wii U because I think it would be great on a Wii U gamepad. As long as Team Ninja has nothing to do with it. <laughs> or as long as anyone with Metroid Other M does not do it. Because the writing in that game was what ruined it. Um, but, you know, I have to keep in mind that, you know, Super Smash Brothers came out in November and everyone was excited about that. And, you know, Mario Kart came out a couple months earlier and that did well up until then. So, I mean, as long as they plan out uh, it should be fine, because for what we know, Zelda U is supposedly dropping in February, which is around the time of Zelda's 30th anniversary. Yeah. So they're automatically competing with that if they even plan on doing anything in February, which I honestly sort of doubt. Yeah. <laughs> if, and, if they're going to probably do anything, it'll probably be May or June of 2016, if anything. Yeah, I think with the wii u and zelda the release date moving away from the holiday season this year i think is a very smart move on nintendo's part because yeah they might have actually had to go through and fix some of the stuff or create uh different gameplay mechanics with zelda wii u and just polish it up but I think moving out of that time period where games like the new Call of Duty, the new Need for Speed, all these giant games are going to be coming out and then they won't have any other big competition because sort of like that, a game, if you remember Dying Light, it came out earlier this year around February and there was a lot of people that said they were really shocked by how well it did. But the reason it did so well was because there weren't any other new games that had come out around that time. Because if they True. were released back whenever Call of Duty or another game came <coughs> out, where everybody's going to be spending their money on another game that they already know and that they've been playing the past installments, then they're going to look at it like, I can play, or I can put my money on this game that I've sort of played before and I know it's going to be at least decent, or I can take a risk on this brand new zombie game because there's only 50,000 zombie games out there. Only just about, <laughs> yeah. and some of them are in those mainstream games too, might I add. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah so. I mean, it's really just the matter of being smart with when their release windows are. Luckily, we've been able to pay attention with just like release dates of what things, and we all, and I think everyone at this point is sort of knowing that Ubisoft and Activision like to release all of their major franchises. That is to say, Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed, like around November ish. It's been very consistent, particularly with Call of Duty. And so, I mean, it really only makes sense to find just that debt, that period where there's, like, nothing really going on. Yeah. I mean, usually the first few months of the year are not that packed anyway. The only reason why mine was actually sort of there was because of Majora's Mask, and that wasn't even a new game. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think there should be no major issues with just trying to find a good release window. Yeah. and. 
Nintendo said that uh, for us not to expect Zelda for the Wii U to come to E3 this year. But with them saying that, they also denied Majora's Mask getting a remake for years. And then they finally announce it, and a few months later it comes out. So do you think we could really take their word on that? Or do you think they're just trying to make it a bigger surprise? Like whenever they showed off uh, Twilight Princess at E3, and it just shocked as, the crowd. As much as I want to trust Nintendo on this one, from what I've learned with developers in general, particularly with like people like Scott Coffin, who did Five Nights at Freddy's, who just kind of does things out of nowhere, I am not, I am not going to trust that word i feel like because also the announcement was made back in march two months have gone by there could have been something that changed that right. could make that just be like oh hey here's a little thing even if they tack it on at the end i feel like they're going to they they might release something i think it would make yeah. sense to me at least and if um, you uh sorry to interrupt you uh keep that's going. fine go for it all right i was going to say if you remember back to when Skyward Sword was first announced before it was given the title Skyward Sword, they just showed off the artwork, and that was a few hours later after their E3 conference during a uh, developer's roundtable or uh, whatever it was called. And they, then they just was like, oh yeah, <coughs> here's this artwork for this new Zelda game that we're working on. And yeah, when was that? Like, 2009? 2010? I, I think it was 2009. And then I think in 010, they actually showed a trailer for it. Yeah, I remember seeing it in 2010. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they could do something similar to that. And then also, if you remember, whenever they actually showed the first gameplay footage off during the trailer uh, at the Game Awards, they said it was a very last minute decision that they weren't even planning on showing it, but then at the last moment they decided. So it could be that same situation again. We may see another Zelda remake, such as Twilight Princess, to sort of hold us over until Zelda Wii U does come out, sort of like what they did with The Wind Waker. Or we may not see a Wii U game at all. It could be a new 3DS Zelda game in the style of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Because I feel that even if we don't see it this year, we will eventually see uh, a third installment in the Hero of Time series because I think Nintendo's seen what Grezzo did with Ocarina of Time HD or 3D and they gave them a little bit more freedom with Majora's Mask 3D and both of those games were huge successes. So I think now they're just giving them all of the assets that they use to make those games and are just saying, hey, see what kind of game you can make by reusing all this stuff that you're already familiar with and make a new Zelda game from scratch. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I could sort of see that happening. Except I'm not entirely sure whether or not I'm okay with it. Because at this point, you know, I feel like even if we got only one Zelda game, like, maybe every two years, that would be fine. But, you know, if, as of this point, we've we've gotten, like, a Zelda game-ish thing every year since 20, like, what, 13? Because we got Wind Waker HD, then we got, um, we got Link Between Worlds. At the same time, actually. Um, we then we got uh, Hyrule Warriors, which was sort of a spinoff, but, but it's still Zelda things that I still need to finish playing. Yeah. And then uh, Majora's Mask 3D this year. So, you know, we're going to be fine. I don't think it's necessary for them to put out a new Zelda game this year immediately if they're already working on Zelda U. Right. I would much rather have all, that, um, all their power going into that because I feel like that's going to be probably the most important thing that everyone wants to see. Right. And uh, before we get off the <laughs> subject of Zelda and move on to something else, I'm wondering what your thoughts on if Nintendo holds on to Zelda Wii U and does a cross-platform release similar to what they did with Twilight Princess on the GameCube and the Wii, but instead releasing it on the Wii U and the NX. Um, uh, that's a good question. Because part of that question is, you know, when 
because the GameCube Twilight Princess like re launched around the time when the Wii came along, when the original Wii came out, right? Well, it was actually like one of the first games released for the Wii, and they actually so yeah. It, re it released the same day as the Wii, and they actually held the GameCube version back a week. That way, they could sort of get people to r run out and buy the Wii so they could play it before it released for the GameCube. You see, I feel like the only way that the NX would have a cross-platform version of Zelda U is if that it was being released at the same time, and I don't think that's the case. I highly doubt the NX is going to make any sort of appearance in any sort of form up until maybe E3 next year or the year after. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we didn't get any idea of the... Um, we had no real idea of the Wii U up until maybe 2011, and that was even... That was like five years after the original Wii. We haven't gotten at that point yet with the Wii, with the Wii U yet. Right. So I sort of doubt the fact or the idea that we'd get it. Um, I mean, if they did uh, release the NX within the next year, maybe, but I am not going to assume that's going to be the case. 